Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani, and thanks for joining us tonight. We have a lot to get into. The Masters is over. Patrick Reed, your winner, but no Tiger. We'll talk about that. Also, big surprises so far in the NFL before the draft in just a couple of weeks. We'll also talk about the Pirates, a red hot start of seven and two. Is it to be believable? Is it to be sustainable? We'll get into that, but the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be. The Pittsburgh Penguins as they look to begin this three-peat opening this week against the Flyers. And here is your panel left to right television screen. We have Jason Mackey, outstanding beat writer for the Post-Gazette for the Pittsburgh Penguins. In the middle, Colin Dunlap, host of the Fan Morning Show on 93.7 The Fan. And Chris Mack, pre-post Mack and Jack, put them together. You got Pirates baseball on 93.7 The Fan. So we'll get right into it, gentlemen. Let's talk about this matchup, Jason Mackey. It's the Flyers. A lot of people think this is a good fit. Do you? I do. I think it's a very good matchup, Pump. Not only did the Penguins have a bunch of regular season success against the Flyers, swept them for, I believe, the first time since 06, 07, but I don't see the Flyers as a particularly deep team. I mean, their top nine is okay, but we're looking at a second defense pairing here that has Andrew McDonald on it. In net, the Flyers have a bunch of, I don't know, question marks, number two netminders. I'm not really intimidated by them. They can't kill penalties all that well. They haven't played great on home ice. This should be very good for the Penguins. It should be a very good series. I, I agree with Jason. I think the Penguins are going to breeze, breeze by him. What do you have? Four of the top ten scores in the NHL, and three of them play uh, for the Penguins in this series. The Flyers have a huge goaltending problem. They haven't been able to figure it out. You know, for the bumps that Matt Murray kind of went through this year and the obstacles that he's faced, it is nothing like the Flyers' goaltending problem. They're going to get to the Flyers' goaltending. They're going to get to it early. And they're going to – I think the Penguins are going to win this series in five, to be they, quite honest they, with you. You know, somebody needs to do like they do for the Browns quarterback's jersey – and start making a Flyers goalie jersey and just list all the names, crossed out name after name after name, because they're never going to find one. And I think what's most worrisome if you're a Flyers fan is this is not a Flyers team that can get up under the skin of the Penguins and drive them off their game like they did when they met, what, six years ago now in the playoffs? That's not going to happen. It's just not. Dave Haxtell's team plays, for the most part, a pretty clinical game. It's going to have to be even more clinical defensively if they're going to try and shut down the Penguins. I, I agree with you guys. I think this is a quick one. Well, he's a college hockey coach, right, Jason? And they play he a is, college hockey game. He has um, terrific hair, though, by the way, does. if that counts for anything. <laughs> but I, I do see Wayne, it doesn't. Simmons, yes, I see it Wayne does. Simmons trying to do some things. Uh, but other than that, I don't see them, like Chris alluded to. I, I see Simmons doing some things, but I don't see them trying to get under the skin of the Penguins because I don't think they have the grit to do it. I don't think they have the depth of the guys to do it either. The one no, thing they can do, however, is score on the power play. The Penguins have been susceptible lately on the power play when it comes to penalty killing. So, Jason, talk about that matchup because you got a guy like Giroux with 102 points, Voracek. They got some good defensemen who can move the puck on the blue line. That could be one aspect. If they get enough chances, they can make a difference. Yeah, if I look at the Flyers game, I mean, the power play certainly stands out. And the Penguins' penalty killing since the trade deadline has faltered. And I'm not going to sit here and say it's Ian Cole. I think that's ludicrous. I mean, he played a part, but he was not the biggest part. The Penguins simply need to get back on a good roll, and we've seen it, actually. Two of the past three games have been really good killing penalties. They need to get clears early. They're best when they do that. Pressure well. Pressure, Mike Sullivan likes to say cooperatively, but it's basically as a unit. I do think that the Penguins' penalty kill is capable of handling themselves against the Flyers' power play. And pump. I think the power play in this series, regardless, is going to be really big because, as I said, the Flyers struggle killing penalties. The Penguins obviously well, have the best power play in the league. Jason, forget clears and forget Matt Murray, to be quite honest with you. When the Penguins uh, killed penalties last offseason, the past two offseasons, you know what they did? They won a ton of faceoffs. That needs to happen. The Penguins need to win faceoffs when they're shorthanded, and they need to win faceoffs in their defensive zone, especially. Um, that needs to happen, and I think there needs to be someone step up and on that penalty kill, win some faceoffs like they did the last two postseasons. And I, I know you're not a fan of this, Colin, but they got to get in front of the puck. Yeah. They got to block it before it gets to Matt Murray. But they're never going to win because Ian Cole got free. <laughs> right. They've got to block shots. Uh, they, they've got to stop a lot of these pucks. We've heard Mike Sullivan harping on that for it feels like the last month, month and a half. They've got to put their bodies on the line. This is the playoffs. This is the time to do that. I expect them to. And I, the, the thing I like about this series when we talk about goaltending is I think it's not an easy entree to the playoffs for, Mar for Matt Murray, but 
I think it's a chance for him to ramp up to playoff speed. I don't think we've seen him hit that speed yet, and this is a good series to do so. I know it's five years ago, but the last time they met in the playoffs, it was 2012. It produced a pretty ugly result, a pretty ugly everything. That was the anointed uh, Peter Laviolette, that Claude Giroux is the new number one player in the world. There were fights, there were physical, there were losing tempers. So, Jason, it is five years ago. Everything has changed since then. But when you look back at that series, can Philadelphia go and say, well, we can get under their skin? And if so, can that work? No, I, I don't think it can, Pomp. And I do think Philly will try a little bit of that. We've seen that in the matchups this regular season. They have tried to be a little bit more physical. They just don't have the guys to do that. Look, look down the list. I mean, there is no Scott Hartnell anymore. There's no Aaron Asham. Uh, the most Wayne you Simmons. Have, Wayne Simmons. I mean, that's it. I don't I don't. But when Simmons see, starts not, somebody who's going to go crush somebody. No that dirty it's, it's not fashionable to say right now because of everything going on with his team but that was the height of Mark Andre Fleury being terrible in the playoffs and a lot of people forget about that like for as great as he was to the media and as wonderful of a guy as he was and that he still is and as much of a folk and cult hero he is in Pittsburgh he was awful right then in the playoffs um, for that span and that kind of got him back on the horse I think that was a recalibration of his career guys the, the other part too as Jason was talking about trying to get under the Penguins skin the guys that that were most successful at that six years ago when they met in the playoffs in 2012 are the guys that they need to have on the ice they can't have Simmons Couturier Giroux all of them going out there trying to mix it up with the Penguins because there's a 50-50 shot. Those guys are going to end up in the box too. They need those guys on the ice if they're going to try and get a power play and work against this penalty kill of the Penguins that has not been on point for the there, last two months. There's so much different about the Penguins too. One, right. Evgeny Malkin is probably going to get emotionally engaged. He's not going to fly off the handle the way he did five years ago. At least I don't think he's going to do that. Phil Kessel isn't the type of player that's going to turn into what James Neal did in that series. It's just not that way. So it's not going to knock anybody's glove away? Yeah, uh, we I, may I have that. I think so. <laughs> Sullivan runs a different bench. <laughs> all right, we'll continue. We have another hockey segment coming up. We'll talk about the importance of Derek Broussard and also the depth on the Penguin blue line and what happens if they do sustain a couple of injuries and other stuff. We'll have that coming up. But, you know, when an owner puts together a perfect team, they know it's going to be a winner. And that must be how Rob Cochran feels right now about number one Cochran Nissan. I mean, listen to this. Number one Cochran just acquired Pittsburgh East Nissan and West Hills Nissan, giving them three local Nissan stores and Pittsburgh's first ever Nissan Super Group. The triple grand opening event is going on right now with three times the pricing power. So you want to check it out. It's number one Cochran Nissan South Hills, West Hills, and Monroeville. More hockey talk when we return. Number One Cochran Sports Showdown is brought to you by Number One Cochran. Go one better. And by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Have a greater hand in your health. 